Hey guys, it's M Galaxy, and welcome to the camera comparison between the Samsung Galaxy S22 and the Apple iPhone 13. Without further ado, let's get straight into the comparison with my live coverage. So starting with the first picture, I don't see much of a difference. Maybe the colors are a little bit different, a little bit more saturation coming from the Samsung, but that's so minor that I shouldn't really mention that. In the second picture, however, I do see a difference. The Samsung has a little bit uh, more exposure in the shadows. So the HDR seems uh, just a tad stronger compared to the iPhone. And we are in the ultra wide angle mode now. And honestly, I think they perform very closely. Other than the, uh, the HDR difference, I don't see anything worth uh, mentioning. In this one, there is a little bit of a difference in the color tones. The Samsung is a little bit more bluish. The iPhone is a little bit more greenish, which is often um, my trouble with the iPhone. The picture sometimes came out a bit too greenish, but that's on a rare occasion, I would say. Overall, I think I would choose the Samsung in this case. In this picture, I think there is a little bit more color deviation uh, in the Samsung. The iPhone is a little bit more flat perhaps. M M I honestly would prefer to see something in the middle here. Same story in the wide angle mode, but notice the lens flare on the Samsung is a bit more uncontrolled compared to the iPhone. Again, both have very solid cameras and perform pretty closely. In the wide angle mode, I think I can notice that lens flare once again. And now let's check out the zoom capabilities of the Samsung S22, which has optical telephoto module dedicated to this. Unfortunately, iPhone doesn't have one. You need to have iPhone 13 Pro to get this feature. And I think there is clear difference here. The, I'm not even going to crop in. The, picture, the difference is just striking. Uh, the Samsung definitely wins. And another picture confirms that. Uh, it is quite unfortunate that we pay uh, such price for, for the iPhone 13 and we don't get the telephoto module, which is standard on the Samsung, but it is what it is. And something that is often getting overlooked uh, is the macro capabilities of two phone. This is how close I could get with both devices. Uh, Samsung, I could get much closer with the Samsung. Unfortunately, macro capabilities of the iPhone are a little bit disappointing. And now let's move to the level of detail. Let's check it out real quick on this train. Here I don't see any major difference. Maybe the iPhone comes with a little bit more sharpening. Other than that, uh, the noise level is pretty similar. And the picture shot in more closer distance. Let's see how it looks in the crop. Again, extremely similar. I don't see much of a difference to be honest. Notice here that we have a little bit uh, more things in focus uh, com in the iPhone compared to the Samsung, but that's just slight difference. And zooming in, I don't see much of a difference, maybe a bit more sharpening coming from the iPhone. And let's check out this bolt. Uh, zooming in, I think I can spot a difference. I don't know if, it, if it's connected uh, with level of detail difference or sharpening coming from the iPhone. Let's go a little bit closer and you can see the picture is a little bit sharper from the iPhone. And zooming in on this rusty fender, I think the color accuracy would be the best if the picture was something in the middle between the two. Uh, level of detail wise, I think they are exactly the same. And now let's check out the video quality and stabilization. 
I'm here working with uh, both phones on, on my uh, custom mount and both seem to be stabilizing the footage pretty well. We are here in, in the ultra wide angle mode now. And I am uh, running here and looks like the Samsung is a little bit more stable. And now we are in the wide angle mode and let's check out the stabilization. Okay, but let's pause for a minute and see the level of detail. Uh, I think some uh, iPhone has a bit more sharpening, but also maybe a little bit more of detail. Again, they are extremely close, but I think I prefer the footage coming from the iPhone. Moving in, dynamic range looks very good on both. Practically the same, and I'm here uh, running. The Samsung is a little bit more stable, actually uh, noticeably more stable. And let's check out the overall look once again, how the footage looks on both devices. Both are pretty good, but I think I would choose uh, the iPhone. The extra sharpness just does it for me. In terms of low light performance, like I mentioned in my other comparisons, iPhone sometimes counteract the unfavorable lightning in the room, making the picture maybe less accurate, but perhaps more appealing, like, you, like you've seen in this footage. Uh, the Samsung picture is much warmer, the iPhone's a little bit colder. Uh, I do prefer uh, the picture coming from the iPhone here. And oftentimes uh, the iPhone has a little bit more contrast and so you can't perhaps see so much detail like in the Samsung of these dust particles, but it may be more appealing. But sometimes iPhone can get uh, too dark, admittedly. Aside from that, the low light performance in itself uh, is very similar. If we go into the crop in this one, the noise level is pretty much the same. The, sh the level of detail is again the same. Zooming in here, uh, the sharpness is maybe a bit more sharpness in the iPhone, but the level of detail and overall noise level is quite comparable. And finally, move to some uh, night mode pictures. Uh, it is quite difficult to test them in this kind of conditions because uh, both set different intervals for night mode. Uh, in this one, I mm, managed to uh, sync the time interval, I think it was 3 seconds on both devices, so you can see uh, the difference, clear difference between the two. Uh, the Samsung is a little bit better to me, although the noise uh, reduction is more aggressive, perhaps more appealing to some uh, in the iPhone. You can see much more artifacts in the Samsung compared to the iPhone, but on the other hand, uh, the picture from the Samsung is brighter and has more details in the grass area and more stars are visible, I think. Aside from that, uh, in the ultra wide angle mode, I think Samsung is a bit more reliable, oftentimes uh, brighter. And in the wide angle mode, notice the difference in the colors. I'm not so sure uh, which one is more accurate, but personally, I think I prefer how the night mode looks uh, in the Samsung. And another picture. Again, the iPhone has that reddish tint all over the image. I'm not sure it, it looks very well. I prefer the, the photo coming from the Samsung. And let's check out the video footage uh, in this all extreme low light conditions. So both are really noisy, but uh, again, those are extreme conditions here. Uh, I do think iPhone is better. It is noticeably brighter and the colors are 
well, maybe not more accurate, uh, more of a representation of true scene, but uh, you can see much more clearly uh, different objects in the scene thanks to that uh, more balanced colors compared to the Samsung. Samsung is just too yellowish and you can see much of a thing. In the ultra wide angle mode, uh, maybe the Samsung is a little bit better, but both are pretty terrible at this. So in the end, I think both phones have similarly good cameras and which one is better probably comes down to your preference. As of note, for me Samsung was a bit better when it comes to the performance in night mode, video stabilization, macro capabilities and having that dedicated telephoto module. iPhone on the other hand provided I think less optical diffractions, potentially more details in daytime video and noticeably more usable low light performance in the video. But you be the judge here, let me know in the comments which camera is best bang for a buck. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for the future camera comparison between Samsung Galaxy S22 and the good old Galaxy S10. See you in the next one. Peace.